Hello everyone, welcome to Concilium Watch. Today's video will be going over the sectorial white company for NA2. I'm Jonathan. I'm Austin. And I'm Nathan. And here we go. Varuna 2 Electric Boogaloo, even though everyone is going to say I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> First up, we've got uh, John Hawkwood here. John Hawkwood. The leader, the creation of Aleph, as he clearly is, thanks to that lovely little white symbol he's got. And apparently based off someone historical that I had no idea that was a thing. Yeah, apparently there was actually a guy named John Hawkwood. Uh, he was like an English soldier that served as a mercenary leader in like Italy, I guess. Uh, I know Mayakas has a really great episode with Professor Willett going into the whole detail of the past of this guy. But supposedly, uh, there are claims that this guy is a recreation of that very man. And now he's just a mercenary that literally works for everyone in the human sphere. And is yeah. getting a little bit of a silver fox look. Mmm, sexy. <laughs> this profile is actually pretty insane when you look at it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, so 4-4 four, four move, 22 CC, 13 BS... 11 Fizz, that's like the only downfall I've seen. 14 Whip, 3 Armor, normal for medium infantry. 6 BTS, and 1 Wound. But he's also, you know, NWI and Shock Immune, so more so 1.5. With Mimetism. <laughs> yep, Mimetism, Martial Arts Level 1 to fight off anything that gets up to touch him. And Terrain Total, which I'm guessing is probably the new multi-terrain. Well, and the lowest model has a Red Fury! What is this nonsense? The second lowest model has a K1 marksmanship rifle. This is not... This is just not fun. This is not fun. Monofilament CCW. Not fun. He has nanopulsor... Multi-pistol. Multi and a nanopulsor plus one burst. Yeah. He, uh, he's kind of made to shoot things in the face with all those weapons. And the BS-13 and the mimetism... He can only be a lieutenant in White Company, though, which makes sense because he is a mercenary and this is his company. But, yeah, this is a profile that just looks like it's going to hurt things. Also, ooh, that's another chain of command option for all of the vanilla factions. It is true. That's a point I didn't even think of. It's a pretty penny, like a really pretty penny. But, I mean, he can hold his own against most things regardless, so if you really want to pay the 45 points of insurance money sh and one SWC, sure. I would absolutely do that because then I can bring Van Zant and I can just build a list around him with his executive order, a lieutenant, and then John Hawkwood. I win. I say go for it. I say sure. <laughs> I, I, I do not understand your love of Van Zant, and I probably never will. What? Are you kidding me? Van Zant is amazing, I'm sure and I'm sure everyone in the comments will support. That. I'm sure yes. everyone yes, will tell will. me I'm very, very wrong. But I'm just going to either play, you know, Nomads or Hak Islam, and or something <laughs> else that has a whole bunch of just backfield, you know, defenders with flamethrowers or oh. chain rifles. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, this guy is pretty great. He pays a lot for what he is, but he's fairly durable and really packs a punch. Next up, we've got Shona Carano. Ah, uh, the woman herself. I know nothing about her except that she has a really big scary sword and she looks like she wants to kill me. <laughs> yeah. Well, Shona is pretty great. She used to be a Aristea star. After she played for a bit in Aristea, she went and started training the Achilla Guard on Neoterra. Then after that, she was actually brought back to the Hexadome by another uh, Aristea character, Final Boss, to join in like this one big team. And now, in Infinity, she is once again retired from Aristea and has been the weapons trainer for the knights of justice and she also works with o12 specifically starmata to help guard the circulars just how old is she very well i mean it's only been a five year uh time skip between n3 and n4 i believe so she's probably around 40 at this point 
So that feels like such a storied history to have in such a, I guess, short time. And she doesn't look a day over 27. You're gorgeous, babe. <laughs> <laughs> She's pretty sweet. I love the, the pano armor uh, on her arms and legs. And then she also has that law key, not the law keeper, the uh, blue coat. Oh, she coat, does, doesn't she? Uh, that she's wearing. It's and, not very blue. And that sword is also from Caledonia, by the way. Uh, it's straight up from the mountains of Caledonia. There's a whole backstory for that as well. Damn right it is. I mean, look at it. Look <laughs> at it. To hell with you, Shazvasti. You will feel cold steel. It's probably cold. <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a great uh, model pose with. Um, it's basically like a coup de gras. Almost. Yeah, with a very gropey Shazvasti Knox trooper trying very hard not to die. <laughs> to no avail. He's trying his best, but uh, from a different angle, you can see that he's definitely been uh, relieved of the lower half of his body. So. <laughs> <laughs> God, and here's the crazy. She's 4'4", she's CC23 because of course she is. BS11, but that's not why you bring her. Fizz 14, but there's more to that than meets the eye. Whip 13, kind of whatever because she's not a specialist. Arm 2, kind of squishy, but again, who cares? She's going to come punch you. BTS3, one wound with the classic no wound in cap, but no shock immunity, I've just now noticed. Yep, that's true. I was under the impression we were going to see more marrying of those two skills, but I guess not. Why? You can dodge on a 17. That's true, yeah. I'm just going to dodge you. <laughs> She's definitely got some uh, ways to keep her survivable, uh, especially with her ability to be linked, which we'll mention later. But this, yeah, this is a great, like, just showcase of, because they said that CC is going to go down in points for, like, everything so you're looking at cc 23 at martial arts level four and a cc attack a plus one damage as all cc kind of cc skills and she's only 27 points with an ap explosive close combat weapon and with the cc charts changing her hitting at fizz 18 so uh ap explosive damage at 18 um that'll kill it almost any tag Oh, yeah. And it's really interesting with this profile, as we mentioned, like she's got the frenzy and she's also got this submachine gun, which are making her costs supposedly go down. So it's really interesting to see that sort of it's a war of things that would make you normally very expensive and things that definitely bring down your costs. Uh, the only thing that they could have given her to make her even more cheap was would be impetuous, like straight up impetuous. This just gives me great hope for Wa for William Wallace. He's going to go down. <laughs> uh, one of the things we didn't mention is um, Super Jump is pretty sweet on this model. Oh. Um, oh. I'm very excited for, like, because this is definitely a Pano character. Uh, she's Pano through and through. I'm really hoping and expecting that she's in NCA, in military orders. I'm really hoping that she comes over to Pano. Because that super jump is a game changer in terms of just being able to put that in a link somewhere. I hope she's linkable. The Joni train does not need another CC monster. <laughs> uh, well, this is this is even more powerful than a CC monster, I'd say. Let me rephrase. The Joni train does not need a CC Leviathan. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, she's she's very good. She's... Very specialized in CC, but hopefully you've got other units that can get her to that position. Which, considering what she's in, should be possible. Yeah, if you can get her there, it, so, something's dying. Something is definitely dying. But onto a much more interesting, because it's not Pano profile, Dawu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this guy's pretty sweet. He's also from uh, Aristea. Um, this guy's a real jerk in Aristea, I will say. He basically constantly thwarts your plans and gets rid of your abilities and according to someone who told me a complete and total charlatan yeah uh he's got a bit of a backstory uh he puts on an air of being in control when really he they say that he has the biggest inferiority complex of the human sphere i mean he's wearing adidas that kind of comes with the territory <laughs> you gotta have black knights on your feet 
I do love the model, though. Yeah, the model is great. It's got uh, a lot of flair. I love him putting on those uh, slick gloves. He just looks very douchey to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you look at his profile, you will accept the fact that he is very douchey. The big thing besides his very fairly basic stat line of 4-4, 21cc, BS-12, Fizz-10, Whip-14, and BTS-3 because Armor-1, whatever, he's Hollow Projector. So he can hide himself as something completely innocuous. He's CC minus six, so good luck hitting him in CC warbands. He's got natural born warrior. Really good luck hitting him in CC warbands. And immunity shock is, what well, again, one of those things where I wish he had something to keep him standing. Stealth I actually really like. I like the, th- the process, the thought process of him being a hollow projector level one mini, Possibly going around as something that you wouldn't think or you might expect to move, but not be him. And with the stealth and with what he's bringing, he can actually dish out some decent damage if you devote the orders to him. Just because of the three burst in nano pulser, and the f- double burst flash pulse can actually help him get there. So the whip 14 ends up not being that weird of a skill. Because he can't use it to push buttons. But with the flash balls, it kind of evens out. And then the viral pistol plus one burst because it's one of my favorite guns in the game. You could easily kill a tag with this too, with that monofilament CCW. Yeah, actually. Because he'd be hitting on 24s and the tag would be hitting on really bad numbers. Except the blue wolf, I think. The CC attack minus six really does, uh, especially paired with that natural born warrior, it really ensures that he's almost always going to be on top of the role for that i do dislike his chances of getting into combat with certain things just because hollow projector one doesn't work like usual hiding things you can still react to hollow projector perfectly normally but the surprise attack is really cute the thing that's really interesting here is the counterintelligence it's gonna you can see at the bottom of this it's available for yu ching iss the Druze by ram sectorial uh, security force rather and um, also White Company, of course. Uh, the counterintelligence, especially with like the changes to order pools now, you're definitely going to be wanting to conserve your orders if you go first and you have multiple pools. There are some other cheaper sources of counterintelligence, but this is a really useful piece for something like Druze, which would never have anything like this in the past. Next, we've got the full list of all units available for White Company. Uh, This is quite an extensive list. Um, As you can see, there's a lot of Pano units and a a bunch of Yuching units. And then a couple, I think there's one uh, Aleph unit as well. So Fusiliers are total with their core and their special, which is the first time that we've seen since we've been doing like the new sectorials where the basic line infantry is total. So total is not going away. Hey, man, don't be upset that the rockets are not total. I'm very upset about it. OK, and I will continue to be. <laughs> the profile I like a lot is the Danavis because the hacking the rice plus for super cheap it's going to open up a lot of interesting just plays that you can now do. And yeah. it's a little silly. I don't know why White Company, I don't know why John Hawkwood was able to get enough pull to get a Danavis. Yeah, it's also worth mentioning that the, um, the Danavis brings a pitcher as well, which is really great. She sort of is a self-contained repeater network in that way and actually if i recall correctly i believe that the guilang have a deployable repeater on their fo i do believe so yeah so that's another synergy there that you can use to maybe uh block the fire lane of something like a uh nice sniper or kamau sniper maybe or hi <laughs> that's true uh the- Next, we've got the CSUs. These guys are going to be... You can bring them on their own. They can't duo like they can in some other um, armies. But the key here is this special fire team, which allows them to join a Fusilier fire team. 
So these guys are a lot of fun. You get to roll for metachemistry, and that 12-point rifle plus light shotgun and specialist operative is probably my go-to for adding to that fusilier link team when you need a specialist. It also just increases the resiliency of the fusilier core team. Yeah. Having a light shotgun in the fusilier team is really great for defending up close, and these guys also have nanopulsers, which brings another thing that is very useful to the core fire team. The Kaplan is actually a really interesting inclusion in this. The Hakaslam unit, their light infantry, their mimetism, their BS-12, they bring a whole lot of just good goodness, and their links are actually really interesting in White Company. And I will continue to beat the drum that because of the Jew Jack and the Kaplan, I, I'm salty! <laughs> Anyone who knows about Yu Ching and White Company, every single Yu Ching player is going to agree with me when I say this. The Jew Jack is going to be possibly run better in White Company than in White Banner. Maybe. And I'm salty mm. about it. <laughs> will you just stay salty over there? I will. But I think one of the more interesting things about the Kaplan is the fact that it has a Harris on a Spitfire, which is very good. Yeah, it's a, it's a really great, uh, rather cheap but effective uh, Harris team, which, as we'll mention later, other units can join and sort of create that toolbox uh, mobile attack piece that you really want. Next, we've got the Nokken. The Nokken are uh, usually from Winter 4, one of the newer armies for Pano. And these guys are pretty good. They've got uh, ODD, or rather Mimetism minus 6, nowadays um they can bring things like a mine layer profile to help secure their area in the midfield these guys don't have infiltration but they do have four deployment plus eight inches which is really solid uh one of my favorite profiles is the ford observer with a boarding shotgun and a panzerfaust so it's a really great sort of midfield specialist that you can tuck in a corner and really make someone's day tough if they come around that corner pano has too many good toys <laughs> speaking of good toys though we've got the tiger soldiers one of the best uh drop troopers in the game very jelly very jelly of tiger soldiers <laughs> yeah it's bs13 it's got mimetism they've got some pretty great weapons too you can bring like a spitfire uh for some reason, you can bring a sniper rifle. It's an interesting choice, but um, the Spitfire, the, then there's also the combi and light flamethrower, which is really, really great. It's a crazy but interesting profile to bring. I would liken them to another Nomad thing in the Tomcats because you drop on the side, and now you have a flamethrower, and if anything's there, it's barbecue. Yeah. But no, Tiger Soldiers are great. I love them so much. I'm really sad that they're my company. <laughs> uh, Carhu special team. Only a duo and availability five. Now, you're pretty salty about this, Nathan. <laughs> I'm not necessarily salty about it. I just think it's a very confusing choice. I, this is the exact same availability and the exact same fire team options that you would have in Winter 4. And I just think it's very odd that they allow you to bring five but they can only duo, and especially in this army, uh, they don't have as this army does not have nearly as many wild cards that Winter Four does. So it's even more confusing, like when you would want to bring these guys. However, I will say that these guys, even on their own, are really solid. They've got MSV One, they've got Mimetism, and they're BS Thirteen. You can bring them as uh, Engineer. Or a paramedic are my favorites. And then there's also this really like strange but very intriguing one, which is two foia box on one guy. Let's call it what it really is. He's carrying around a rail gun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is what a foia box is. I just really hope that it's not just like a plus one burst. I hope that he's literally carrying two, two of them. I don't think we'll be that lucky. <laughs> I'll convert it if it's not. <laughs> sure you would. I'm sure you would. The Haidao. The Haidao is interesting. 
The hideout is basically the Kamau only that's chunkier, but doesn't have the mimetism. He has the MSV2, he has the no wound, he has no wound incapacitation, and he has shock immunity because, again, we needed Kamau to electric boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> I I will agree with the aspect that he is not as good as the Kamau in a straight gunfight. But he's going to survive more hits than a Kamal would. Because they're going to be hitting on basically the same. They're both going to be hitting on 19s in that special core. They're both going to be using multi uh, multi snipers. I think the Hideout has access to a bit more interesting weaponry while keeping the MSV. But the Armor 3 can and will make a difference. I will agree there. However, I will say that the mimetism, on average, will probably cause the Kamau to be more survivable against your average unit in Infinity. Um, but especially with the crit change, armor on this hideout is going to be really good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Though I was wrong on uh, MSV. Turns out, hideout and Kamau, very similar in the terms of one unit has one profile has the msv the other units do not yes but the big difference is 29 points one swc for red fury because why not <laughs> oh yeah that's a good point uh so the hideout you know we've only been talking about it as if it's the unit that you're going to bring along with the fusiliers and maybe we'll talk about the orc troop in a bit but on its own you say that it's got a red fury Yes, it has a Red Fury and a couple of other interesting profiles, honestly. One of the ones that every single Invincible Army player will know and love is the 26-point killer hacker profile with a boarding shotgun. Pretty sweet. So, yeah, you can definitely see these guys being used maybe on their own, uh, considering how cheap some of those profiles are. And the BS-13 is going to make them very good at fighting most things. Yeah, yeah speaking of BS-13, we've got the... Svalerheim and Nice. I love these guys. They've been probably some of the better units throughout all of Infinity. Um, they're really solid. They've got that dreaded MSV2 plus mimetism combo. And it's very interesting that these guys cannot join any links. I'm personally uh, happy about that just because it would detract from their place in Winter 4. But... Um, yeah, you definitely want to take these guys maybe as a HMG on its own is a really great hit piece, especially because this sectorial has access to smoke. Let's just be happy that it's not exactly Veruna 2 Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> yeah, he did not need to be, be terrifying. Lakeable. Did not need to be lakeable. That'd be mean. It'd <laughs> just be too mean. They can kill things without the link, so I say it's not even... Uh, it's not even that big a deal. Next, we've got the Orcs. Uh, these are your standard uh, vanilla HI that uh, used to get uh, bullied a lot just because they don't have uh, anything super interesting. But what I will say is that in N4, these guys are going to end up being 6-2 movement, which I think is uh, kind of a big deal for some of these uh, attack HI pieces. I think it's going to be a lot of help. Which is going to make a really fast, mean Harris option if you just brought the orcs. Or, like, substituted something in there with the orcs. 6 I find is always less about speed. It's more about being able to position yourself much easier than 4-4 four four does. Yeah, I will say that, like, the, the 6-2 movement allows you to... I mean... Ideally, in Infinity, you want to be able to move and shoot, move and shoot, and ideally, you want to be killing something every time you move and shoot, right? And I think that the 6-2 move, when you're just move-moving, it's not going to be a big deal, obviously. But if you are utilizing that move-shoot, move-shoot, then it really does add up over time. Very much so. Especially with some of the weaponry that the orcs can bring to bear. It's true. They've got an HMG. They've got a Feuerbach. I really am a big fan of the Harris profile with a tin bot and boarding shotgun. Um, but I do think that one of the more popular links you'll see in this sectorial is three Fusiliers 
a Hydao MSV2 Sniper, and possibly an Orc HMG or an Orc Foibach. Hey, like I said, where have we seen this before? <laughs> <laughs> but another HI option, the Jujack. I'm actually really interested about this, as I mentioned before, because when we get to a little bit further, they can link with Kaplan. So I can already hear every Yu Jing player screaming from the rooftops going, why CV? Why have you forsaken us? Why must you saddle us with the Shangji to bring these gloriously gorgeous models on the table with White Banner? Well, if you want to forsake everything that makes you honorable, you can pick up some Pano and run White Company. <laughs> and you can run them with a Kaplan. You can run them with a Duck. You can run them in a Harris with a Sparefire, because why not? Yeah. yeah. I do think that like the the Kaplan Doctor being able to join up with a bunch of uh, two wound guys. They are two wounds, are yes, they are definitely two wounds with three armor and three BTS. So they're basic, they're basic Zuyong stats, but with six two. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. So again, I'm I'm a little salty because again, I have to bring a Shangji. In Yu Ching, in White Banner, to core them or to harass them. Not in White Company. <laughs> and of course, they have all the fire in the world. Every single profile has a flamethrower of some variety. Except for the boarding shotgun and engineer, actually. But they have Panzerfaust, so who's counting? Yeah, and that shotgun has a 10 bot B with deflector level 2. Yeah, it's better than the 10 bot, the, the reflector level 1 from the orcs. For only 39 points and half an SWC. <laughs> I just realized you can make a really scary core team with a Kaplan Doctor, a couple of Jujacks, and a Hydal Killer uh, Hacker. Ah, yeah, that's going to be a pretty uh, nice attack hacker. I like it. I like it. Next, we've got the Guilong Skirmisher, another one of the better uh, skirmisher or midfield specialists in the game. Mostly because he has MSV1 and camo. So all the other midfield skirmishers, they're a little afraid of this guy. But why is there only one? Why is there only one? Because they can't have everything. But if you're going to bring a midfield skirmisher, bring two. Yeah, I think basically what you'll end up having to do is you'll bring a Guilong skirmisher and then you might bring a Nakin as your secondary midfield specialist. And Nakins are fine. They have ODD. They're okay. But that's not what you want. You want the two camo midfield specialists like almost every single army runs. And you can only have one of these. I'm not going to shed a tear for something with so much mana. <laughs> one thing I will point out is that because both the Guilongs and the Nakin have mine layer profiles, you could play some camo mind games with these units even though you only have access to one well you're going to kind of know what it is because you can only bring two knock and you can only bring one guilang so if you made one mine layer you can't do the other one because you're gonna know what those are yeah but if you brought three mine layers then you just felt filled the middle of the board with a whole bunch of mines exactly yeah okay i i concede i concede <laughs> here's the weird profile that i really want to talk about because I don't know why White Company got a Guija. Two of them. Yeah, and they don't have Duo, unless it's something that they're going to put on the profile. But it is weird, because the Guija is not, nothing to write home about in terms of tags. Why? I don't get it. They're a fine tag, they're a little expensive, but they're nothing that's amazing. They're nothing that's going to make you go, oh, I really want to bring that and make a list around, like, say, the Avatar, the Marut, the Yodam. The Megariba Guard. Need I go on? So here's my theory, right? White Company is a mercenary army, right? Yes. So as far as I can tell, ev basically every single tag in mercenary companies is all manned, right? I think so. So my theory is that if we did not have the Guija, we'd have the Squallow, right? The Squalo would be the Pano counterpart of your basic tag that's like really solid, but doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles other than that heavy grenade launcher. But what about the Blue Wolf? 
Well, I think the blue wolf is more like specialized. I think the reason is that for these mercenary companies, they can only get access to like the most basic of tags, right? So even when you think about something like foreign company who has the iguana, so the iguana is an old pano tag that's been cycled out of being used, right? So the reason they've got the guija is because if they had a squalo, then that would imply that not only do they have the tag, they don't have just the tech, they also have the remote presence pod somehow. They would have had to steal one of those pods, which is usually just used by Pano military. So I think that the Guija makes sense here because it's a basic tag that fits the theme and is manned. Sure. I'll concede that one. I just, it's, it just feels like the odd duck to me because you have so much power in White Company for all these super powerful profiles. And then the Guija is just there. I do think that if it had the blue wolf, it would be more, like, glamorous and more, you know, you would definitely want to take it more often. The blue wolf is only one more point than the Guija, so of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I agree. But I think that the Guija was not meant to be the star of this faction. I can agree with that. I think it's mostly going to be the character selection that's the starlet and the draw to White Company. This is the one I wanted to talk about was the V-Guard. Why do they have Varangian Guard? I feel like CB is being Oprah. You get a Varangian Guard. You get a Varangian Guard. Everybody gets Varangian Guards. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely one of the eyebrow raisers. I think uh, this is one of those things we'll have to wait and see what the sort of fluff answer is for this. But it does seem like Varangian Guard are just sort of getting handed out like candy these days for these new sectorials. I mean, for this one, it's going to be a footnote. John Hawkwood went to Ariadna. The end. These guys originally... It, it's very interesting because Varangian Guard, when we first saw them, everyone just assumed that they were going to be strictly O12. But, I mean, as we've seen, they're not strictly O12. They're more uh, versatile than that. Which I don't see like in the fluff, even though like the Varangian Guard came from Ariadna. I don't see Ariadna as really helping any body that's not gonna further them even with them being a part of o12 it'd be like nah we ain't doing that now. you're forgetting the whole fact that to even be a part of o12 you have to help the collective as a whole but as a mercenary company that's not the collective that's a mercenary company yeah i agree there o12 went to ariana gave them the power of flight for andean guards being warband type How'd I get here? <laughs> I don't remember being here. Which now makes, you know, it does make you think that every single faction from Ariadna loves to drink. Russians love vodka. French love wine. <laughs> <laughs> They're all drunk at some point. Whiskey and mead. <laughs> Maybe the Varangian Guard, uh, one day, O12 landed on Svarheima, <laughs> and these guys got left behind. They missed the bus. They missed the ship back. They're like, well, I guess this is home now. It's got mountains. Feels like home. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then we've got your basic uh, doctor and engineer pair. Uh, these guys are really solid, honestly. They're Whip 13, uh, the Zenshi Yi Sheng, and the Zenshi uh, Gong Sheng, I guess. Uh, Zenshi Gong Zhang, I think. These guys are pretty solid. Um, They're your basic... Dr. Engineer, with a little bit of a bump in willpower, I believe. And I fully believe that the Gong Zhang is going to have a gizmo kit. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so it could be useful for healing your Guija or some of your other bots here, which we will definitely mention from afar. I think we only really need to mention one bot on this list, because why? The Bulleteer. It's the first time we've seen the Bulleteer outside of Pano. Fusiliers, can they have a base hacker? Yeah. So you bring a Fusilier base hacker, you bring a Denavis, and you bring a Bulleteer. You have the base Fusilier buff up the Bulleteer with Marksmanship level, you know, level two. You have the Danavis put some white, uh, white noise out there, and now you have a Bulleteer running around, ODD, that can't be targeted by MSV2. Because, yep. why not? I... Yep. Why? Why is this here? 
it's a great combo. It's definitely a great combo. It's a stupidly powerful combo. I dislike this combo. Well, this is the first time that, like, looking at the availability of these bots, that they don't really look to be cut in half like you usually see in mercenary companies. You can still bring three, three Fugazi. You can still bring two Pathfinders, which Pathfinders are your fast, cheap specialist. If you just want to push the button on the last turn, they're there. Yeah. They also have Sensor, which is really nice. Yeah, so... The availability, so because this is going back to our other two videos where we were discussing that everything seems to be more expensive because now tactical awareness is now the flavor of... A tactical window, you mean. Yeah, tactical window, yes. Tactical window is the flavor that we're going with for this time, and it's... They have to put out the cheap orders somehow. And so here, here's your Pathfinders for 17 points. Here's your Fugazis for 8 points. It's really interesting that White Company is like this, but if you look at back to the very first video with Starmada, they only get one Flashbot. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a different playstyle for Starmada. Starmada is going to be much more elite and sort of tight-knit, whereas the AVA3 Fugazi has always been sort of a a flag that can be raised for a sectorial that's going to be successful because uh, in the past, you know, you could spam three of these guys and have three regular orders for a very cheap price. Honestly, I think all in all, this kind of speaks to the versatility of NA2 armies as a whole because you can run that hyper elite NA2 army. You can run that big spam army. We've seen this with um, the shot, especially the super spam, but they can flip the switch and go hyper elite because they do have those super expensive profiles that are actually really good. And I think White Company shows us precisely that kind of thinking because you can just run this hyper, hyper elite list with orcs, with Jujak, with Kaplan, with uh, all the characters and everything. Or you can completely flip the switch and run that Fusilier core that's defensive and a Harris and a bunch of little orders that are just running around and giving you what you need with the specialists that you require in the midfield. Absolutely. And I think that's definitely the reason that NA2 armies are so popular. I mean, we saw a post, uh, basically a polling on the WGC Infinity Facebook page, and by far, NA2 is the most popular faction. I think... I think that's just more of a whole fact of if you collect the game, you are going to happenstancely collect yourself into an NA2 army, so why not play it? And exactly. the fact that CB made NA2 armies not only competitive, but actually really good in some cases, I think they want to push the NA2 idea more, and I am completely and totally on board for that. You've got the mule bots, which are your basic baggage bots, then you've got the war core which is a cheap flash pulse. Now we've got the characters. We've got John Hawkwood himself, which uh, has a special fire team option. He can join any fire team in the army, which makes him very versatile in that sense. Young guy, wandering Shaolin monk, another CC monster, because this sectorial needed another one. <laughs> right? You have Shona already. Do you really need <laughs> the Shaolin wandering monk? You've got the Kunai Solution, um, Mercenary Ninja, which means you've got another Camel Marker, possibly, if you want. Um, then we've got Shona Karano, of course. And Valeria Gromos is a very interesting addition here. She's another Mercenary. Um, she's a hacker, which is a... She's actually a pretty solid hacker. Yeah, I think she's what? Whip 14? Whip 14, I believe, yeah. And if you combine that with the tin bots of either the orcs or the Jujak, I think she's a wild card of anything. So that's another... Um, this is a very similar playstyle to Deshot in that sense, where you can include Valeria with a tin bot heavy infantry, and now suddenly she becomes this hacking master. That'll hurt a few tags with her upgrade expel. That's true. Uh, yeah, yeah. I hope she gets a re-sculpt though <laughs> yeah there's the really great one in defiance but uh let's hope that she gets a, a nice re-sculpt for the the masses soon yes for the masses for us that didn't get defiance <laughs> still <laughs> still looking for that cassandra kusanagi by the way <laughs> <laughs> and then finally we've got Tao Wu, 
So we will go on to the special fire teams. We already mentioned that uh, Fusiliers can have Orcs join in, and then you've got the High Dow as a wild card, which is a really great one. We've got the CSUs, which can substitute in for Fusiliers. Or Kaplans. Or Kaplans. Yeah, or Kaplans. It's a good point. So that makes your Kaplan fire team even cheaper. That means, okay, that means you could run a Jujack with Yankai, because I'm just looking at this, with Shona if you really wanted to, with Valeria, again, if you really wanted to, and a Kaplan Doctor. Or, to actually make it cheaper, Jujack, CSU, CSU, Kaplan Doctor, and something of your taste. It's true. It's true. Silly. Gross. <laughs> You've got the, um, th- we've talked about the Jujaks being able to join Kaplans or Orcs, which is interesting. That'll be really fun because, um, since both the Jujak and the Orcs are going to be 6-2, they can all run really quick all together and not worry about someone falling behind. I think Jujaks in a Orc core will end up falling to the wayside because you have the Orc HMG that's going to take the place of the Spitfire and the Orc Fuhrbach for obvious reasons. And the Jujak doesn't really have a powerful defensive piece. But you're going to bring an engineer with a parent of us to keep them all running in case you run into that hacker or that jammer or that glue gun. I think that um, if I was going to run these guys with the orcs, I would focus mostly on orcs for your main hit piece. But the Jujak are much cheaper than the orcs, so I might fill in with some of the other uh, profiles. And you definitely want to be able to have that heavy flamethrower direct template weapon because that's actually a really useful intuitive attack against camo markers. Okay, yeah. I take back what I said before. This is not Vervuna 2 Electric Boogaloo. This is the shot to Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> yeah, I would bring the Orc, the Jujak Engineer, and Valera. So you can fix the Orc if it goes down for something with the Engineer, and you can protect it because the Hacker's right there. Nah, I'd bring the Hideout Killer Hacker if I wanted a Hacker to protection. True, he, he is a wild card, so he could join that group. You could actually make a really interesting heavy infantry fire team in this um, army, that's for sure. Very much so. They kind of take that inspiration, it seems, from, like, Invincible Army, without all the tactical win- uh, awareness. So, we've already mentioned John Hawkwood is a wild card. Then we've got Lian Kai, who can join that Kaplan fire team. So, he brings the the close combat ability to that Kaplan's... Uh, Although he's sort of competing for a slot with Shona Carano, because uh, she can also join that fire team of Kaplans or Varangian guards, which is but very Varangian guard do not get the Harris; they only That's get the true. duo. So you're basically gonna like grab Shona, and you're gonna grab a Varangian guard to kind of she can already like dodge on seventeens, but now she can have smoke as well because of the Varangian guard. I'm almost yeah. tempted to, in a Kaplan fire team, want to bring both, just because Yang Kai has the flash pulse to actually kind of help get people up there if they really need to in a core. Like, sure, it's just the flash pulse, but it's a burst two flash pulse with whip 14. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> I think a really solid option for taking something like an objective room would be take a Harris Kaplan Spitfire. Then take Lian Kai and Shona Carano. All that Spitfire has to do is get them to that room, and then they're just going to own that room. Oh, yeah, because they could just wait by the doors, and goodbye anyone who was foolish enough to knock at the door. Well, I think that does wrap up everything. Um, I think we've talked about everything. I think so, too. And I'm, I'm just... White Company looks good. It looks powerful. I'm... There's just so much Pano, and Pano already has so many sectorials, and then to put a whole bunch of them into a a mercenary company, I'm a little so su- I'm just, eh, eh, because Pano. <laughs> so I'm a little on the fence in the end, because I believe you could totally make a white company list that uses exactly no Pano pieces. But you're going to suffer. Well, no, I was tempted to say that white company is like Star Company the quote-unquote fourth Pano um, sectorial, where Star Company is the quote-unquote fourth Nomad sectorial. So, 
I don't know. I can't really say for certain that they're like that because of all the power that's in the Yu Ching pieces, but they do have power equal in the Pano pieces, and you can make a lot of interesting combinations. So I'm going to stick with my second saying. They are definitely a new version almost of the shot, a little bit more elite. They still have all the varied uh, fire teams, and they can actually do some very interesting things with bots. At least they didn't get the Rushi. I'm so happy they didn't get the Rushi. <laughs> Yeah, that would be a little absurd. <laughs> Honestly, I think the bullets here will beat out the Ruishi just because of the Denavis. Now now it will, yes. Ah, uh, that's dirty. At least if they at least the bullets here isn't linkable like the Ruishi is in the shot. That's true. We can all be thankful for that. <laughs> we can all be thankful for that. Uh, so guys, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up, like and subscribe. It would help us out a lot. We love you guys. Keep watching our content. All right. See you, everyone.